This is my mother-in-law's dog, Willie number two. Ciao, sono Willie. And this is what he recently did to a linen bedsheet. I don't want to throw the sheet away as it was a really good piece of linen, which is the perfect fabric to make a summer dress. And might I add, chihuahuas do the most. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how much usable material I can recover from the bed sheet. Overall, the sheet measures 96 inches in length and 90 inches wide. That means that the sheet is the same width of fabric that would come on a standard bolt. And the length I have remaining gives me two and two thirds yards of usable material. This amount informs the type of dress I can make. So I need to think of some outfits that would work with two and two thirds yards of linen. I'm thinking maybe something like a really simple swing dress. Maybe something in a, a bright, bold color. You know, something that would be loose and breezy and comfortable to wear when it's super hot outside. Maybe give it a feature like um, a bodice detail here. This is something that would be very easy to make and I definitely have enough material to do it. Or here's another possibility. Something with really simple lines fitted closer to the body like a sheath dress. Not a lot of detail. I don't know. I do like the color though. It's nice and bright. Or I could try something with a little more structure, like some construction details, like a collar with lapels maybe, maybe a, a single or double lapel, I don't know. This outfit could be a jumper maybe, maybe with shorts or a skirt, that would be cute some buttons, some little stitching details, and most definitely pockets. Otherwise, what's the point? This is the pattern I found that has some outfit designs I like. This particular pattern gives you three variations of an outfit you can make but you can mix and match any of the elements from among the variations and create your own thing. For example, I like dress C, but I wanted to have the pockets from dress B. And the backside of the envelope gives you some suggestions about what type of fabric works well with these dress designs. They tell you what notions you need, like zippers or buttons and how many. And they tell you how much fabric you need for each variation of the design. This is the color I've chosen for my dress. It's Rit Dye in Fuchsia. And when dyeing a natural fabric like linen, use the all-purpose formula. And also make sure to have a bottle of Color Stay Dye Fixative to help set the color. For the amount of linen I'm dyeing, I'm using two packages of dye. To dye the linen sheet, the first thing I did was wash it and bleach it in very hot water to remove any fabric softener or sizing and discolorations, 
as well as to pre-shrink the fabric. Here I'm dissolving each envelope of the powder dye in two cups of very hot water. And now let's test the dye with this piece of white kitchen paper to make sure it's the color I want, and it is. Also, to boost this coloring process, uh, in addition, I added a teaspoon of dish soap and a cup of salt to the dye bath. So, getting this linen to the color that I wanted it to get to, it took about a half hour. And when it was finally the color I wanted, I wrung out the excess dye and I soaked the bed sheet in color fixative. Then I rinsed the sheet in clean water until the color stopped running. And then a final wash with some mild detergent and an old towel to catch up any color that might run. After washing and drying the linen, a final pass with the iron to smooth the fabric and get it ready for pattern cutting. Here's the tissue pattern. And the sewing instructions. And that's it. And let's get all this tissue opened up so I can see what I'm working with. As you can see, each pattern piece is marked out in five different sizes, so you can further customize the fit for your own individual body. This tissue paper is so fragile, I don't want to use it during construction because it will end up just getting shredded. Like, believe me, this is, I'm, I'm talking from experience here. I'm really, really rough with the tissue patterns. So what I'm doing now is I'm separating the different pattern pieces to make it easier for me to trace all these markings onto something stronger and more durable. This swirly, flowery, designed fabric, it's not really fabric, it's more like, I, I guess I would call it tissue fabric. Uh, what I'm using here, this tissue fabric, I'm not even sure, honestly, if it's supposed to be used for sewing. I found a whole roll of it in a discarded junk pile. 
So far, I've used it to wrap gifts. I've used it as light diffusion paper for my lighting, as packing material for glassware. But it works great for sewing. I'm able to transfer markings onto it and I can sew it like it's fabric and use it for tissue fittings, which saves me a huge step because I don't have to make a separate toile to do all my alterations. No sewing pattern straight out of the package is going to fit everyone. It's not a, you know, you pick your measurement and it's going to be a perfect pattern for you. It never works out that way, at least for me. The, the sewing pattern is, it's more of a template, I'd say. You, you select the size that's the closest to your own measurements, and then you use the pattern as a starting point to make adjustments to it according to your own individual body measurements, which is what I'm doing here. I need to lengthen the bodice of this pattern by a half inch, so I'm slashing the tissue at the length and shorten line indicated on the pattern, and I'm adding additional tissue to it. If you lengthen or shorten one section of bodice, you have to do the same thing to all the sections of the bodice. Seems to fit about right. Okay, so far so good. Now I've got to alter the skirt pattern. To get the skirt section of this dress pattern to fit me correctly, I have to add two inches in length to each skirt panel. All my alterations have been made. I can now cut out my pattern pieces from the linen fabric. Some of the pattern pieces, like this neckline section here, needs more structure and stabilization, so I'm attaching some heat fusible interfacing to it. And what it is, it's pretty much just a thinly woven bit of muslin cloth that has these teensy tiny little heat activated adhesive dots on one side of it and look at the structure it gave this piece of linen. Chef's kiss. Mwah. All of my pattern pieces have been cut out and now it's time to sew the dress. I'm putting together the bodice of the dress first. So here I'm attaching the side back pieces to the back. And now let's attach the side front and front pieces. Let's get those edges like go, I would say linen is pretty easy to sew. It doesn't stretch or slip around while you're cutting it or sewing it. However, it does fray at the 
cut edges. And if these edges aren't taken care of, the fabric could fray right down to the seams and compromise the integrity of the garment. So one way to prevent the linen from fraying is to pink the edges like I'm doing here with this rotary pinking cutter. Once I attached the interfaced neckline pieces and the shoulder straps to the bodice, I should have been done with the upper portion of the garment. That's how it's supposed to work. But <laughs> look, I am not an expert sewist. I, I mostly use my machine for repairing things and I got a little overconfident in my sewing abilities and I accidentally caught a section of shoulder strap under the needle when I was finishing up the neckline. So now I'm doing my absolute least favorite part of sewing and that is ripping out mistakes and doing it over. Now we'll just patch up that hole. There, fixed it. Unfortunately, though, you can see the stitch marks on the shoulder straps. Well, that's out of the way. Now on to the... What the... <laughs> oh my gosh. I did it again. Different shoulder strap, same mistake. At least I didn't sew the skirt on upside down. Well, so far, so okay. The final step, yay! Sewing on the buttons. According to the original placket pattern, the front opening of the dress requires 10 buttons. The pattern did have markings on it that told you where to place the buttons, but since I altered the placket pattern, I now have to work out for myself where all these buttons need to go. I know the first and last buttons should match what's on the pattern. The remaining eight in between, um, I'm just going to try and eyeball the spacing. This one's actually down here. With the tailor's chalk, I'm marking in the end point of the final button. Two centimeters. Now let's mark out the rest of the button placements. Absolute disaster. That is just a tragedy. So, the problem I'm having with making these buttonholes is when I'm trying to sew one in a place where there are several layers of fabric in the seams, like what I have in this spot right here. It makes the material a little too bulky to go under the buttonhole foot of my sewing machine. So that means I have to make a few of these buttonholes by hand. So I'll make my starting point right here. 
Then I'll measure the distance to the other end, which would be right about here. Then I put a needle right here at the one end. And that's going to be my bar tech. Oops, needle needs to go in straight. I gotta get it through these layers of fabric that's bunched up here inside the seam. Now I put my handy and much used seam ripper into the other end and I rip the fabric right down the line until it hits the needle on the other side. Now let's test it. Perfect. I said before that ripping out stitches was my least favorite part of sewing. I may have to amend that. Hand sewing buttonholes is my true least favorite part of sewing. All the raw edges of fabric in the buttonhole that I cut has to be bound in thread so they won't fray. And I have to do this by hand all the way around the inside of the buttonhole. And it's done when it's done. You know what? I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna put a little fray check on these cut edges to seal them right up. There. Let it dry a little. It's not pretty, but it means I can get away with using fewer stitches when I sew the rest of this buttonhole, which will save me a tremendous amount of time. So here's the material before, and here is the dress I made from it. This fun, fabulous frock features many fine, fantastic points such as pockets. Pockets big enough to hold a cell phone, as well as other useful and very important items of great value. I love that this dress is so easy wearing so easy to move around in. It's got a bit of a relaxed fit. I can do all kinds of different activities in it because I have a full range of motion. Linen is a strong, breathable, natural fiber. It's heat resistant, so it feels cool to the touch. It wicks away sweat. I can get up to all kinds of shenanigans in this dress and I feel breezy and comfortable. I took a bed sheet that had been chewed up by this guy and I was able to transform it into a summer linen dress. I'm gonna call that a win. Nessuno capisce la mia arte. Me ne vado. Arrivederci. State buoni.